everyone, it's Jane and welcome back. And to those of you who are new subscribers, hello. I reached 200 in the last couple of weeks and I'm really sorry that you've had nothing new to watch for a little while. I do have a couple of excuses, but they're probably not important. I'm back. It's time for us to get to grips with Silhouette Studio and think about some interesting projects for the coming months. I first want to start with something that I read last week on Silhouette School blog. And it's something I've been doing for quite a while, but I never thought about telling you how useful it is or why you should do it, or even did it cross my mind that anybody would be interested in why I did it? Let's have a quick pop over to Melissa's Silhouette School blog. And it's about saving custom colours in Silhouette Studio. She says people have been asking her for years about this. Certainly in Photoshop and Paintshop Pro, we can save to our palettes here and have little squares within our program. And it is one of the things when I first started using Silhouette Studio properly uh, about two years ago that I missed. I missed being able to add my custom colours here or on a different tab or something. So I did what Melissa is suggesting here. I made my own. Well, I didn't actually. I cheated. You may know that I use Stampin' Up cardstock quite a lot because it comes in A4 size which makes it easy for me to do my cards because I simply have to cut it in half and I like that I like anything that's easy and mariestamps.com handily produces a PDF of all the colour codes for the cardstock that is in use and it's a very accurate PDF as well. I really like it. And so I've had it saved as a Studio 3 file. Ooh, I, I don't know, over a year and a half, easily. And I've used it, but you've never seen me use it. And so you wouldn't know that that's what I do. The reason I like it is she has the codes so that you can type them in. Now that's very useful if you have basic edition of the software only. You'll need to know these actual codes because you've got no other way of sampling them. And you would type them in in either of these line or fill panels. You type them in here. You type RGB if that's all you've got or the hex code, which goes after this little hash sign here. Um, six Fs is white. So let's have a look at one of these. And well, I probably ought. Oh, don't know how I've managed to do that. Let's undo. There we go. Let's move this over and zoom in so we can read it a little bit easier. And I've got a little rectangle here. Um, let's choose sweet sugar plum down here. So I want this to be sweet sugar plum. So I can type in the code C E eight seven A three, and then you must remember to press enter. You don't have to use capitals; it will change them automatically. Press enter, and your shape will change to that colour. Brilliant. It doesn't go up into this little square here. Custom colours only go into this square here when you use this eyedropper. And the eyedropper only comes with designer or business edition upgrades. If you're someone who is getting interested in drawing and designing more of your own projects in Silhouette Studio, you may think that upgrading is a good idea. 
I like the dropper because it makes changing colour easier than having to type in the letters and numbers, for me at least. So if I want to change this to a different colour, I can click the dropper and this is why I made it go white earlier because I was messing around and I'd got it selected. So I can click pull party. And one of the good things about Marie's PDF of colours is they're very, very true. The hex here says that it's A9 double D C7. And I can see over here, that's exactly what I've got. And so her PDF of Stamping Up Colours is absolutely excellent. And I'll link to it below so that you can have a copy for yourself. As I've said, if you have basic edition only, then you're going to need to know either the RGB or the hex so that you can type in the numbers or the code in the relevant box. However, it does mean you can still do your custom colours. As I said, I've had this sitting here like this for a while. I also do this. These are a set of swatches for skin colours that I found on Google just by searching for skin colours. But you can see here that all I've got is the little squares. There's no hex code and there's no RGB. Now, of course, for me, that doesn't matter because I can use my little eyedropper. However, if you're on the basic edition, something like this isn't going to be as usable. The other thing that I do as well is I've got a page or a file for my traveller's notebook. It's got my traveller's notebook basic page size and some basic shapes and sizes of strips, a rectangle, a square and a heart. And I would add other shapes to this as I design more of my own elements to go on this page. I haven't done as much with the Traveller's Notebook as I want to, which is why I haven't actually made any more. And so I've got this set up as a quick way to have things ready to hand when I want to do a Traveller's Notebook page. I didn't realise that there's a really quick trick to having elements like this all these colours added to a document where you're already working. Let me show you what I mean. This is just a plain new page and let's pretend that I've made something really really interesting on this page but for now it's just going to be a square and um, let's fill it with a horrible green and let's draw another one and let's fill that with a equally lurid purple. So I'm in the middle of working on something like this and I decide, do you know what, I need my stamping up colours. Well, in the past I'd do exactly what I've got here. I'd have it open on another tab and I'd either pick up the colour with the dropper here and take it across into the other document, but that's a bit long-winded. Or I'd do this, I'd select it, copy it and paste it over here. Again, that's a bit long-winded and when you're in design mode or inspiration strikes, you don't want to be doing this. And here's the trick. Let's go to my library. Here's my stamping up chart and here's my traveller's notebook basic shapes. You can right click a file and you can either open it or this one here, merge SU chart. I didn't know what this meant so I never tried it. And in Melissa's post I've learned that if you do merge and open it, it opens the contents of that stamping up file 
into the document where you're already working. How easy is that? Well, that's much better. Now I've got my colours right where I want them without too much messing about and no flipping between windows or tabs. Excellent. I can also merge more than one. If I want my traveller's notebook shapes in there as well, I can open that into the same design. Now, my boxes are all on top of my colour here, but I can just slide that down out of the way. And now I've got my traveller's notebook shapes, its basic page, and I've even got my card size in the back there. Or with just one click, instead of having to be switching between tabs. Isn't that great? Once you've made some custom colours or a palette, and if you save it off the mat like this in this left hand side or the right hand side if you prefer, it doesn't really matter, it will always open in that same place. It won't interfere with your design, but it will interfere if you've put anything off to the left here. But isn't that brilliant? Melissa has a template that you can download to try this for yourself. And I downloaded it just to show you. Here it is, custom colour chart. And if I click that to open it, it opens and looks, well, it looks a bit scary at first when it opens like this. But if you just click it, all those green dots disappear. And you can see we've got all of our little squares here. And each of these is individual. Melissa hasn't grouped them all together, which is what I would do. But of course, you don't want them grouped together because you want to be able to change each of these individually to the colours that you want. You can then make up your own colour palette and it's saved off down here. Well, if I go out, it's saved off to the side. And that means if you save it to your library, you can open it and merge it with any design that you're working on and it will always open down here off to the left. A really good thing about Melissa's template with these squares all being individual is even with the basic template you can use a dropper. At the bottom here there's one here that says transfer properties of a shape to a selected shape. Now you do get in a bit of a mess sometimes with which shape is which, but let me show you quickly how this works. Let's fill this with some custom colours. So let's put this pool party in that I had earlier. And then I need another one, don't I? So let's quickly just copy, paste, oh, undo. Let's go back to our colour chart, paste, move this over here just out of the way of all these uh, squares. You can see how much time will be saved not having to mess around with that. Let's go for Calypso Coral and two will do. We don't need more than two just for the moment and I'll move that off out of our view. So. I'll set that to transparent, we'll set our red line and let's draw a couple of rectangles over here for no reason whatsoever. And let's make this first one, sorry, no, let's make this first one an extremely horrible lurid green and an equally the purple. Or at least they're probably nice colours in the right circumstances, but not in big rectangles. If you have basic edition and no eyedropper, and you haven't got any colour names on your squares, you can do this. Transfer properties of a shape to a selected shape. So I can click on this green one and it should change this purple to this nice pool party green. So let's try it. 
Hurrah! It worked. Bear in mind that it transfers all the properties. So because this rectangle has a red cut line around it, your target shape Oops, I didn't mean to open point editing. Your target shape will also have the red cut line. So bear that in mind. Not only do you get the colour, you get cut lines too, or any line style that will be on that one. And similarly, we can do the same again and change that to Calypso Coral. And that's how quick and easy it will be. Have a look at the template yourself. You may find it really, really useful. Or you can do what I do and use JPGs or PDFs and make up your own colour palette. And then using the merge option, you can open it on any working document and not have lots and lots of tabs open and be switching between them and getting a mess like I do. Let me know how you go on if you try this or whether you find it useful or if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. If you're new to my channel, please do subscribe so you don't miss out on any future good stuff and I'll be back with another video very soon.